Hi there folks, my name is Novawing24 and welcome to another episode of my ongoing preview series of Dovetail Games' upcoming Flight School. So, um, as always when I'm with these videos, I want to say first of all thank you very much to the guys over at Dovetail Games for uh, allowing me to uh, preview uh, Flight School. Um, but uh, just a, a fair comment to everybody here that this is a preview build. This is a preview build. This is not necessarily, gonna, this is not the final one that we're going to see come to our virtual skies on the uh, 24th of May. Um, uh, so just keep that in mind while we are watching this uh, video today. Alright, so big premise of Flight School of course is actually going to Flight School and actually sort of all the uh, fun and all the uh, excitement, all the education that goes with actually uh, learning to fly. So for that there are two Flight Schools that come with uh, Dovetail Games Flight School. So uh, we're going to have a look at those today. We're going to do a, um, we're going to do one of the lessons from each of those, uh, of each of those Flight Schools today. We're just going to be covering off the uh, introductory lessons to each one. Uh, so we're going to be covering off the uh, the first flight uh, in the uh, very much the first lesson one of getting your uh, LAPL or Light Aircraft Pilot's License. And uh, then we're going to cover off the first lesson at the uh, US School for getting your Private Pilot's License. So just to give you guys an idea of some of the, uh, the the sort of the way they're doing things in the direction they're going with this one. Again, as always, a uh, warning that this is not necessarily finished and there are a couple of bugs which we are going to see here uh, which I've been assured will Will not be there when the final release. All right. So as I was saying before, they get this uh, with our flight training. We get uh, two flight schools. So we've got our first one here in the UK, which is uh, Waltham Flying Club in England at uh, Echo Golf Lima Mike. So this is um, again, as I said, this is for the LAPL, the Light Aircraft Pilot, pilot Training. So. LAPL or the, the Light Aircraft Pilot's License um, is the European uh, UK equivalent of the Recreational Pilot's License in the UK, um, sorry, the Recreational um, Pilot's License in Australia uh, and the uh, Sports Pilot's License in the US. So uh, just keep that in mind with that one. So different names, same kind of class of aircraft. The other one, of course, we've got is Eagle Pilot School in Arizona at uh, Kilo Papa Romeo Charlie. So this one is uh, Prescott. Uh, this is with the uh, full uh, PPL. Uh, there you go. So all right, let's. Uh, without any further ado, let's jump over to Waltham Flying Club. And uh, so we can see you get a little bit, of, a little bit of history about the uh, Flying Club as well, which is kind of cool. And then we're gonna uh, we're gonna jump straight into this one. So as you can see, whoop, when I click the right button, there we are. Um, so you essentially get um, there's sort of five lessons and a skills test as well. And um, I'll show you a few more uh, things a little bit later. Actually, no, I'll show them to you now. Um, so what we can see here is if we go up here, this is your pilot profile. Your pilot profile um, logs your hours and stuff like that, uh, and tracks your missions and whatever. It also tracks your tra yeah, tra tracks your license types. So with our lot of aircraft pilots license, you can see that we've got the five basic lessons. But before you can take your skill test, you do need to get some solo flight time, uh, which essentially you just flying around uh, in free flight, um, just building some hours up. So you need three hours of solo flight time for the light aircraft pilot's license, and you need five hours a minimum of solo time for the private pilot's license. Uh, the beauty thing is, is that of course any hours you grab for the LAPL will count towards your PPL, which is kind of cool. All right, so that's that one. Anyway, back to this, back to the important stuff. Let's go uh, to flight school. All right, so we've got uh, lesson one, take off. It's pretty obvious but you know what let's uh let's do this one so we can actually uh experience some of the uh some of the actual the way they're doing things so essentially it's all about our first takeoff so we'll be uh we're departing a classic airfield uh with the beautiful piper super cub uh here and just keep keeping us climbing to a thousand feet leveling off and uh, basically just listening to our instructor Welcome to White Waltham Airfield near London. This is said to be the largest grass aerodrome in the UK. The expansive field and historic buildings make for a timeless flying experience, as you'll soon discover. And the Piper Cub is the quintessential general aviation aircraft. I always tell my students, flying a Cub is real flying. Pilots have been known to fly in Cubs at White Waltham since before the Second World War. And that's what we'll be going up in today. This fantastic Cub has been prepared and fueled for our flight. Why don't you hop in? Let's get the engine started. First, I'll turn on the battery. 
Now, there are only two bits of information you'll need from the instruments during this lesson. Airspeed, or how fast we're going, and altitude, how high we are. Airspeed is displayed on the top left gauge. That's the most important instrument you'll use today, so get familiar with it. In this cub, the airspeed is shown in miles per hour. Altitude is displayed on the instrument just below the airspeed. It's reading near zero since we're sitting on the ground. All right, let's start the engine and go flying. Here we go. Clear prop! Must admit, I was kind of hoping to do a hand crank start like the A2A. Can you hear me yeah. okay? We can communicate over the intercom as long as you have your headphones on. That's better. I've got mine turned up as you're a little quiet. First, let's check the controls and I'll explain their effects. Push the stick left, then right. Good. This will roll the aircraft in the direction you turn. It's simple stuff and will all make sense once you try it out in flight. Next, gently push the stick forward and then gently pull it back. This will pitch the nose of the aircraft down and up. When you want to climb, raise the nose towards the sky by pulling the stick back. When you want to descend, lower the nose by pushing the stick forward. And finally the rudder pedals. Pressing these moves the rudder to twist or yaw the aircraft left and right. It's the hardest control to understand, but you'll figure it out. To begin with, you'll probably only use the rudder pedals when we're on the ground. Pushing the rudder pedals will also move the tailwheel, and that's how you steer on the ground. Left rudder will turn us left, right rudder will turn us to the right. Since there's no control tower here at White Waltham, we just broadcast our intentions over the traffic frequency. That way any other aircraft nearby will hear us, know where we are, and where we're going. White Waltham Radio, Piper Golf Delta Lima, taxiing from Waltham Flying Club to runway 07. Okay, we're looking good. I'll taxi us up to the runway. So, you probably see some of those shadowing effects there that are a bit odd. Um, that is part of the known bug in the uh, the scenes for this, so it is something that's being worked on. It's okay, we won't see it in the final, but yeah, it is a known bug in this release that we have here. We'll perform a normal takeoff and climb to 1,000 feet. I know this is all new to you, so I'll talk you through it. Now let's test the engine by performing a run-up. We always do this to reveal any problems before we leave the ground. I'll hold the brakes to stop us from moving. Gently move the throttle control all the way forward. Good. Now pull the throttle control back out. Good stuff. Now we can taxi onto the runway and line up for takeoff. White Waltham Radio, Piper Golf Delta Lima, lining up runway 07. The when shadow ready, is flickering under the wing rolling. is a little disturbing though. That's I kind of would have expected that would have been a bit better, but anyway. Interesting that Turn it's only right on onto one the runway too. And line up so the nose is pointed straight down the white dashed center line. The other part that was a little concerning is that, you know, I've got a reasonably powerful system and that um, initial sort of cutscene Use a little was all right using the, uh, the right. sim objects which sort of seem to be uh, struggling a little bit, but hmm, maybe just need to finish Use optimizing the sim Use to keep the nose bit. pointed straight down the runway and get ready. Okay, full power. The tail will rise very quickly by itself. Start pulling back on the stick at 40 miles per hour. Fantastic, we're flying. Let the aircraft accelerate to 75 miles per hour. Keep full power for the climb, so control the airspeed by pitching up or down. Nice and the 75. Good. Hold 75 miles per hour with pitch and keep climbing. Fully open throttle. 75 miles per hour is the Cub's best rate of climb speed. That means we'll get to altitude as fast as possible flying at 75. You're almost at 1,000 feet. You're doing really well. Fantastic flying.
Gently push the stick to pitch the nose down and stop the climb. Fly level at 1,000 feet. Great! Our takeoff and transition to cruise is complete. Well done. And, you know, fairly basic lesson, like many uh, tutorial ones, but, you know, it's a, it's a good start, and it gives you an idea of some of the interaction you'll have with, uh, with the, uh, the voice actors and with the, the actual lessons that you have as being part of flight school. So, remember that this is the primary thing what flight school is about. It's about, it's about flight school, about your flying lessons. Um, yeah, we, we get the whole world to play in, and a couple of people to play with it in, but, you know, it's, it's about these lessons and sort of getting the basics of flying. So, uh, all right, let's uh, let's finish that lesson, and then let's go uh, let's go across the pond, shall we? To uh, head over to the American Flight School. So we've got the basic one there. All right, so we'll head back to our flight school choice. So now let's head over to uh, Eagle Pilot School in Arizona, and uh, some left to go through again. We've got a little bit of history about the field and about the uh, pilot school there. I should actually check to see whether these are actual real pilot schools. I'm kind of guessing they are, but I need to check. Anyway, uh, so right, let's have a look at our available lessons. So uh, we still need to do our first one here. So you do have to do your first lesson before it unlocks the other ones. So you would have seen in the um, in the Waltham uh, flight school section, you would have seen that all the lessons were unlocked because I'd already done the first lesson before recording this video. I just wanted to you know, just check, check it out. Uh, but this is all going to be all new, so you're going to be uh, doing it at the same time I am, this one. So this is uh, lesson one, the airport traffic patterns. So let's see how this one goes. Now this is some very important skills, actually, the, the airport traffic pattern. And, um, something that, you know, was missing from the old FSX lessons and is very important um, for all sorts of flying. Welcome to Ernest A. Love Field in Prescott, Arizona, home to the Eagle Pilot School. Oh, that is taking a bit of a frame rate hit, isn't it? That's a serious frame rate hit. Our location here offers fantastic flying weather, several runways, and a control tower, all surrounded by the wild beauty of the American Southwest. This is one of our Piper PA-28 Cherokees. It's an incredibly popular general aviation aircraft that's often used for training. I want cool glasses. Like the that. instrument panel is a bit dated compared to some modern glass cockpits, but personally, I like the steam gauges. Yeah, I agree with you there. Ready? Let's get going. Let's start with a simple trip around the airport traffic pattern. I'll explain more while we taxi to the runway. Prescott Ground, Cherokee 109er Sierra Hotel at Eagle, ready to taxi, remaining in pattern. Cherokee 109er Sierra Hotel, Prescott Ground. Altimeter 29er 9er 6. Runway 3 right at Foxtrot, intersection departure. Taxi via Foxtrot. 3 right at Foxtrot via Foxtrot. Cherokee 9er Sierra Hotel. Okay, it's your airplane. Taxi us along taxiway Foxtrot to the intersection with runway 3 right. Taxiway Foxtrot is straight ahead of us. Follow the yellow lines, then turn right. Whoa, okay. Yep. Okay. Traffic pattern is a hmm. rectangular pattern See around the runway that allows aircraft to take off and land in an orderly manner. The pattern is especially important at airports without control towers. Flying the pattern also makes it easy to configure the airplane in the same way every time and make a stable approach to land. Go straight across here. Nice detail. I wonder if assuming this is the terminal design, guys. All right, awesome. here we are. Oop. Stop Arr. here. Arr. Eep. Prescott Tower, Cherokee 109er Sierra Little Hotel past the whole is ready line. to go. Holding short runway three right at Foxtrot, remaining in the pattern. Cherokee 109er Sierra Hotel, Prescott Tower. Right close traffic approved. 
Runway 3 right at Foxtrot. Intersection departure. Cleared for takeoff. Interesting. Right hand pattern this Right close. Sorry. Traffic approved. <clears throat> cleared for takeoff. 3 right. Niner Sierra Hotel. Taxi to the right out onto the runway. So, yeah, yeah, it's sort of, you know, it's a lot of new buildings, but it also okay, some very not? familiar old uh, buildings as well. Oh, the Cherokee rotates at 55 knots. Ahead. Crosswind from the left today. You'll need to turn left a few degrees to correct for wind drift and maintain the runway center line. Climb straight out to 5,700 feet. That's 300 feet below the pattern altitude of 6,000 feet. Good job. Right on speed. Out there were quite nice. Okay, here comes 5,700 feet. Now make a turn 90 degrees right to a heading of 120 degrees. Well, this is uh, definitely uh, a bit more rough on the uh, edges of the performance. Which is something I wasn't expecting. Uh, I was expecting, you know, sort of for the other ones I've done, I was expecting the you know, 64 bit just to sort of eat this Maintain up. Maintain 90 uh, knots not. and 6,000 feet. Your goal is to fly a ground track parallel to the runway. slow. Speed up to 90 knots. Still slow. Please maintain 90 knots in the pattern. You're a little high. Maintain 6,000 feet. Okay, downwind is a good time to do the pre-landing checks. Belts are tight. Mixture is rich. Fuel pump is on. Landing gear is down and welded. <laughs> yes, it's very much welded on the old Cherokee. Okay, you're a beam the touchdown zone, so start descending. Pull the throttle back to 1500 RPM and lower the nose to initiate a descent. Add one notch of flaps and the aircraft will slow to around 75 knots. Aim for a 500 foot per minute descent rate. Now start looking over your shoulder at the runway. We'll turn base when we're 45 degrees off our touchdown point.
Okay, here we are. Now make a right turn 90 degrees onto the base leg. Flight 300 degrees. Oh. The hard input there. Add one more notch of flaps and slow to 70. Now watch the runway. Try to time your turn to roll out onto the runway center line. Keep this turn shallow since we're flying slow. Done properly, you should roll out right on the center line at just the right altitude to continue a stable approach. From here, it's just like a normal landing. In a tricycle gear airplane, you'll want to touch down on the main gear first, then let the nose wheel come down. When you think you've got the runway made, Add the last notch of flaps. Slow to 65 knots on short final. You're a little low. A little low. Add a bit of power and raise the nose a touch. Yeah, okay, man, you definitely rolled out a bit low on that one. Still low. Can you get back on the ideal glide path? You're too low for the approach. You're a little low. Add a bit of power and raise the nose a touch. Still low. Can you get back on the ideal glide path? Hmm. Definitely uh, a little bit concerned by the... Uh Scenery here and the frame rates, this is a quite concerning. I'm hoping this is going to be uh, some issues with the aircraft as well. This is definitely not seeming the best that I've had. I definitely like the appreciate the uh, the lessons have been quite good and definitely sort of keeping things of, of just uh, sort of as you would hear from a real instructor sort of just the corrections there. Here we are. Hold the throttle control back to idle and keep the nose up until the mains touch down. Cherokee Niner Sierra Hotel. Exit next taxiway. Exit the runway to the right when you're able. Yeah, that's, uh, those frame rates are, uh, they're concerning, they are concerning, but as I said, you know, this is still a preview version, this isn't the final release, um, and we're, we're mainly here to, uh, to look at the, uh, the sort of the mission side of things, the tutorial side of things, and okay, I kind of like the lessons, here. and I like the fact that, uh, you know, like, it, it actually, Very nice. it works like an actual instructor. You can do that on your own? And there we go. So uh, we've uh, we've flown it. Admittedly, we stumbled through it a bit, but as I said, it's it's about giving you an idea of that the types of lessons and lessons that you're going to have, and things like the airport traffic pattern. That's a really really important lesson to learn for aviation. Um, yeah, it's not just about you know push the throttle forward and pull the stick back and you go up in the air. You actually got to you know it's about you know maintaining you know, separation and actually all the other little things that go on in terms of uh, aviation and both you know real and virtual worlds. So that's it's lessons like this that I actually really like and I like the fact that they actually have have put these lessons in uh, in here which is really good. So it'll be uh, interesting to see what else we've got there and of course we probably saw the little achievement pop up there in the corner there. So now of course it's now unlocked uh, the rest of the uh, lessons as well which is always good to have so uh, there you go all right so as I said, this has been a, a quick little preview of a, a couple of the uh, the lessons that are going to be uh, forming the core part of the flight school experience um, lessons themselves are looking really good um, I'm thinking that the, uh, the the scenery and the the aircraft I think they're going to be part of the the uh, tweaking because uh, yeah that's that's a little concerning at the moment that's that's a little concerning um, but uh, the the lessons wise the lesson content the lesson makeup like just reading through these ones here 
actually sort of you know a lesson on you know how to handle emergency landings you know power off stalls and um, our radio navigation like you know seriously like yeah, lessons like this are so important um, for real and virtual world aviation so this is really really cool to see that they've actually put a lot of thought and effort into the, actually these the type of lessons that go with this so that's good to see Alright folks, well that does wrap up this uh, video, uh, this particular preview video uh, for Dovetail Games Flight School. Uh, as I said, uh, just a reminder again, this is a preview version, it is not the final version. I will of course be doing another series of videos once the uh, final version is released. Uh, but yeah, just remember folks that this is the preview of uh, Flight School, this is not the finished product. Um, but if you are looking at grabbing it, I, you know, I think I would suggest that you do. Um, I, I'm definitely glad I pre-ordered it. Anyway, uh, so it's going to be available on the 24th of May and it's available on Steam. I'll pop a link for the store uh, link down in the uh, description down below. Alright folks, thanks very much for joining me on this episode again. Don't forget as always to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying these videos and want to see more. And of course as always you can catch up with me and all the things I'm up to between videos by finding me on Facebook and on Twitter. Just search Neverwing24. Alright folks, thanks very much for watching. Take care, safe skies to all and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.